A certain British enthusiast, Simon Whitelock, built a 48-cylinder engine with a total volume of 4,200 cubic centimeters and made it into the Guinness World Records. What is 48 cylinders? It is six inline eights combined into one engine. To start this madness, a separate engine with a volume of 125 cubic centimeters is required. A 50 just can't turn it over. For details on how this thing was built and how it works, check out the channel. Simon Whitelock was building exclusive motorcycles long before his main project. It all started in the 1980s with the popular and affordable three-cylinder two-stroke Kawasaki models, whose appearance greatly appealed to Simon himself. In 87, he built an inline four based on them, followed by projects with inline sevens and triple threes, as Simon Whitelock himself calls them. In such triples, there were already a total of nine cylinders. There was also a replica of the original Kawasaki H2R. Thus, he gradually arrived at the project of the monstrous 48-cylinder motorcycle. The motorcycle was named Tinker Toy in honor of the Boeing B-17 heavy bomber from World War II. Such flying fortresses were usually given names, and the B-17 was named Tinker Toy. As Whitelock himself says, the motorcycle was not created for speed, nor for power. It was built with one goal in mind, to make it into the Guinness World Records. The total volume of such a giant is an impressive 4,200 cubic centimeters. According to Simon Whitelock's estimates, his motorcycle is capable of reaching a maximum speed of about 200 kilometers per hour. Volkswagen seems to have a penchant for exotic engine configurations in its elite cars, but it's better than any VAG engine. The cylinders for the project were borrowed from the Kawasaki KH250, which was the most mass-produced of the legendary triples, so there shouldn't be any issues with spare parts and their cost. 18th of April, 1999. We're going to give it a whiz. I don't know if it will start, we'll soon find out. Any new engine uh, can be difficult to start, and of course when you build it, you never know if it's going to start. Once I put um, my hand over the back of the car to pull some fuel through, then the engine was fine. <laughs> System proved as working, it rev very well, and we could then move to the next stage of building the other five engines. During the construction, Simon Whitelock accumulated a whole collection of KH250 engines, which he purchased throughout the United Kingdom. These engines were stripped of their gearboxes, ground down, and welded together. The entire exhaust system of the engine is handmade. This is an incredible 24-in-1 scheme, where stainless steel pipes are connected to empty four-stroke mufflers. Once the basic eight-cylinder engine is assembled and the homemade exhaust manifold is installed, the next step is the engine's intake. He was assembling it from ordinary copper plumbing pipes and securing it by modifying standard parts of the KH250 engine. And this was done six times. Jewelry work. Then there was the assembly of all six parts into one, measuring the finished engine to create a suitable frame for it and the compatibility of all this with the transmission from BMW. The engine, by the way, measured 750 millimeters in height and 600 millimeters in width. After assembling everything into a single structure, a gear mechanism was designed and created using a wooden model, connecting six engines and transmitting power to the transmission. After almost all the main components were assembled, the next step was the ignition, which consisted of six Jaguar E-Type distributors and the installation of six Makuni carburetors. The throttle grip was borrowed from the older 500 cubic centimeters model, as it was much more durable. Later, it will be machined from a solid piece of aluminum. September 2002, test runs to check the auxiliary engine. A Honda Melody motor was temporarily installed in the frame as a starter, which ultimately could not properly crank the 48 cylinders to simply pump enough fuel and air through the large carburetors. Later, this was handled by an engine from the Honda Lead, but ultimately a 125 cubic centimeters two-stroke engine from the Italian Piaggio was installed on the motorcycle. Yes, in fact, the motorcycle is even. 49 cylinders.
Since there was simply no space left on the motorcycle for the main fuel tank, Simon Whitelock came up with a very unusual solution. Between the eight-cylinder engines, there was empty space where he placed a homemade tank made from stainless steel plumbing pipe. The false tank, made from two parts of the KH250, covers the ignition system, the throttle cable leading to the six carburetors, as well as a small fuel tank needed for the additional engine that serves as a starter. There is also a small water cooling system designed to dissipate heat from repeated starts at exhibitions. All the wiring and electronics have also been handmade by Simon. The motorcycle is equipped with a small automotive generator and a fuel pump that provides the necessary fuel pressure. As already mentioned, Whitelock used the gearbox from a BMW motorcycle with standard, albeit slightly modified, controls, foot pegs, and a drive shaft. The front suspension, brakes, and wheels are taken from the Honda Goldwing, though they are designed to withstand a considerable weight of 600 kilograms. The fork was equipped with springs, and the wheels were modified by Scottish craftsmen to enhance their strength. Overall, almost the entire front is from the Honda Goldwing, except for the instruments, which are all from the KH250 and underneath a rather ordinary seat made of sheet metal lies the battery and that small two-stroke 125 cubic centimeter starter engine from the Italian scooter. The tail section is also from the KH250, slightly widened to fit the motorcycle frame. Starting this two-wheeled wonder is quite interesting. After turning the ignition key, you first need to switch on the ignition toggle for the small engine and start it with the red button. Then, once the main engine starts, you need to turn off the toggle. The best part is that this monster runs very smoothly. As is well known, the more cylinders there are, the smoother the operation. But you need to be extremely careful with this thing, because if it falls on your leg, you will most likely lose it. 600 kilograms. I've started it on numerous occasions. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to ride, but uh, before we brought it here to this museum, its final resting place for now, I did ride it. If anybody wanted to make me a serious offer on this bike, uh, personally, I don't want to sell it. It's, the money's not important, but if a half a million pounds turned up, I could be persuaded. Don't tell the wife. In his everyday life, Simon oversees the construction of shopping centers, and his engineering mindset allows him to unwind in such an unusual and amazing way during his free time. You must remember that old video with this motorcycle, watching which it was hard to believe in its reality. That video held the status of the most viewed motorcycle video on YouTube for a long time. By the way, this video currently has 20 million views. Now you know the story of the motorcycle that entered the Guinness World Records as the vehicle with the most cylinders in its engine. 